So my name's Cassie. I work with 350 Maine. I'm 22 um, and I'm our youth engagement coordinator. And I want to thank you all for being here and making the time to show up on a Saturday morning. Um, we really appreciate it. So we're going to get started now um, with a few youth from Maine Youth for Climate Justice speaking. Um, and after they speak, we'll open it up for a Q&A and some time for interviews. So our first speaker will be Ruby Peterman. Ruby is a 16-year-old who is currently attending Baxter Academy for, te for Technology and Science, but is spending next fall at a rigorous environmental and sustainable science-based semester program. Ruby cares deeply for the environment and is part of several climate justice groups, such as Maine Youth for Climate Justice, Maine Climate Action, and is the head of the media and communications for the main branch of U.S. Youth Climate Strikes. Our government has treated climate change like a child. Every time the planet has acted out to show that it is in peril, they say it's make-believe or put it in a timeout. Um, this is not okay. It is too late to ignore the climate crisis and we need to act now. Four years ago, 21 youth began suing the federal government for violating their constitutional rights to life, liberty, and property by knowingly contributing to climate change for over five decades. The Juliana vs. U.S. case is becoming a major milestone for both youth activism and the fight for climate change. Our government has been pushing for this case to not go to trial, but the upcoming hearing on June 4th can change it all. On this day, the 21 young people who filed lawsuit supported by our um, filed lawsuit supported by Our Children's Trust will present their argument of the Court of Appeals in Portland, Oregon about why this case should go to trial. The hearing could also decide if the government will cease creation of new federally approved fossil fuel infrastructure in the U.S. while the appeal is being heard. The Juliana case is extremely important, yet very few people are aware of it. Under the guidance of the Future Coalition, which is one of the largest network of youth-led organizations in the U.S., and Our Children's Trust, the team behind the Juliana case, our organization, Maine Youth for Climate Justice, is proud to be one of the many groups holding press conferences to raise awareness about this imperative case. As a young person, I cannot stress how important it is for youth to be part of big movements like these. We are so close to the point of no return when it comes to climate change, and our government is not taking the necessary action. This is our future that is being ruined, and ignorance is no longer an option. Supporting and taking part in youth-led movements such as Maine Youth for Climate Justice is as important as ever. MYCJ began in February of 2019, and we have been growing ever since. Just a few months, we have run several successful events, such as March 15th Youth Climate Strikes that had hundreds, even thousands of people participating throughout Maine, the April 23rd Maine Youth Day of Action, and the press conference here today. We are now a coalition of motivated youth that come from all parts of Maine, every age group and many different backgrounds, who are dedicated to this cause. We are living proof that young people have the capacity to change the world. It has become apparent that we as young youth have to take action and fight for our futures. Whether you're a young person or an adult ally, it is everyone's obligation to support the organizations like ours, as well as help us spread awareness about big events such as the Juliana case. Helping organizations like ours can be as big as joining and taking leadership roles to as small as showing up to our events and donating to the cause. It is extremely important that everyone takes part in this fight, no matter what age you are. For now, you can help us work towards a livable future by staying informed and watching the Juliana Case live stream on June 4th at IamJuliana.org. Thank you. Hello everyone. Sorry. I'm just going to talk briefly about what to look out for us in the future and what's going to be going on with our movement. This summer we're going to be working on implementing more climate education in schools here in Maine, which has potential to be really impactful, so be on the lookout for that as it develops. Also this fall we're holding a strike on September 20th, along with some other initiatives that are still in the works, including a summit and other events that could provide opportunities for anyone who wants to get involved. Please make sure to follow us on our social medias. Our Instagram is Maine Youth for Climate Justice, and our new branch with the U.S. Climate Strikes is Climate Strike Maine. Um, that way you'll be able to keep up to date with what's going on in your area and stay involved. 
There's always room for more youth to come in, as well as any adult allies that have the opportunity to help out. Your support is very valuable. So yeah, make sure you are out on the lookout for exciting things in the future. Thank you. Um, so that was Sarah Whitcomb speaking. Um, Sarah is 17 years old and goes to Thornton Academy. Um, she plans to pursue environmental science after she graduates in 2020 and is in, uh, really passionate about environmental justice and also works in the media and communications for the main branch of the main um, U.S. youth climate strikes. So yeah, that was Sarah and now we're going to have Brianna speak. Uh, Brianna is 17 years old and goes to Casco Bay High School. She is also one of the members of the Solarize Portland team and Maine Youth for Climate Justice. So I'm going to start out with a personal testimony. So from living in Maine my entire life, I've always been exposed to the intense beauty of our planet. Green trees, towering mountains, clear lakes, rocky beaches. Our state is a wonderful place to enjoy nature in the outdoors. Growing older and learning more, I have become very worried that the environment around us is in danger. Although Maine continues to be very cold in the winter, we still see some unpredictable weather patterns that haven't been present in the past. This is something that may be overlooked, but it is indicative of Earth's changing climate. As a young person, I'm afraid for my future. It's difficult to look forward when there's a looming threat of our planet becoming unlivable. Through our behavior, the human species has dictated the future of planet Earth, and we must put an end to these actions now. We have to fight for climate action. We need our voices to be heard. People in office must facilitate this action from a legislative level. Our planet and our futures are at stake. So I also have a statement written by Representative Chloe Maxman about this case and the importance of importance of youth voices in this movement. So, hello, my name is Chloe Maxman. I am 26 years old and represent District 88, Chelsea, Whitefield, Jefferson, and half of Nobleboro in the main house of representatives. I've been doing climate justice work since I was 12. In all these years, I've learned a couple key lessons. First, young folks can see through the fog of bureaucracy to understand what justice looks like. Youth are not afraid of what is needed and fight for what we love. Second, all of our fights are intrinsically connected to politics and by extension, law. That is one of the reasons that I ran for office and why I'm so excited to support your work today. Even though, though the road is hard, we can't stop fighting for what we love. Thanks, Brianna. So yeah, we are super grateful for Re Representative Maxman's support and the statement she sent in. And before we move on to the Q&A, I want to emphasize the importance of this case and say this again, because this is what the case and conference is all about. Young people are being denied a livable future as we speak, all because of systems of exploitation, greed, and injustice. And worse, youth who are fighting for their own futures are being ignored by decision makers and constantly told our voices don't matter. But let me remind you, youth are powerful. We won't stop until the change we want to see happens because we aren't waiting for adults to lead the charge anymore. And we're doing this through actions like standing in solidarity with the Juliana plaintiffs because this case acknowledges that climate change is truly a crisis, that youth are inheriting a climate and world that is in the midst of the largest catastrophe known to humankind, that our generations didn't create, it confronts that our government has ignored climate change, spread mistruth about it, and flat out buried it, while continuing to invest in a fossil fuel-based economy. Juliana is one of the few chances we get to turn things around in the next decade. When the president and our Congress won't protect our future, our courts can. This case is an opportunity, and a rare one, to instrumentally change things in our system. And this is why we're standing here today, right now with you all. Maine Youth for Climate Justice and 350 Maine supports a youth-led case that has the power to reclaim our future. And we urge you to support the youth in this movement fighting for a stable climate. Show up for local youth-led climate actions here in Maine. Stay informed and listen to youth speaking about this issue all over the world. 
Start doing this by following the Juliana case. On June 4th, the 21 young people who filed the lawsuit, supported by Our Children's Trust, will, will present their argument to the Court of Appeals in Portland, Oregon, about why this case should continue to trial. The Juliana lawsuit will be live streamed on June 4th at imjuliana.org. You can watch this and follow their case. You can also find other ways to support the case and plaintiffs, and most importantly, take action. Thank you again for being here. Maine Youth for Climate Justice and 350 Maine really appreciates your support of the youth climate movement and listening to our voices today.